My name is Christopher Mason. I'm a professor of genomics, physiology, and biophysics. And our laboratory does three main things, which is clinical genetics, computational biology, and then synthetic biology. So ways to improve diagnostics and care for patients, analytical tools, and also uh, more creative approaches to genetics where you mix and match components and design cells and microbiomes. We use qPCR for a wide number of applications in the laboratory, so this includes a lot of cancer research where we're looking for copy number variation or structural variation where the, the genomes have changed and the tumor has a different genome. We're trying to understand what happened essentially as a mutation and sometimes large mutations. So qPCR is what we use to find and validate some of these mutations. And then we also use it actually for astronauts to find um, telomeres change length, so there's a whole space medicine component which we're also looking for the mutations and sort of impact of radiation on the genome and see how that changes the, the body. And then we also do do sequencing. We do a lot of sequencing, but uh, you know, whenever you see an interesting mutation, you always want to validate that mutation with an orthogonal assay. And this is where qPCR and amplification methods are very good because they're a different method and they're often very sensitive. We do RNA-seq on almost every sample that comes in the lab these days. So this is either shotgun RNA sequencing, where we take all the RNAs, or single cell sequencing, sometimes even spatial transcriptomics we do for, for biopsies now. But qPCR is what we always go to if we want to confirm an isoform or confirm a change in expression. It is often the most sensitive way to confirm the presence of some new biomarker, some new way to measure the cancer. And this could be a number of things. It could be a new gene fusion event, or it could be uh, just a simple expression change or an isoform that's different. So we get samples from all kinds of places. This is uh, including the hospital, this includes the subway system, sometimes space stations. So we really get samples from everywhere. And when they get into the lab, automation is really key to make sure you have robust protocols. You get reliable and reproducible extractions and metadata, all these steps are well mapped and tracked using uh, a lot of automation. And then we also do extractor where we make sure, okay, we've got a microbiome sample or some other coral samples. We can really extract out all the nucleic acids very robustly and get really good yield. So those are some of the automation protocols that we use in lab and, and really like because we can just get you know, better data, frankly, from it. We can get more, more nucleic acid, more data. Every time we're doing qPCR, processing samples, you know, tracking microbiome differences between patient cohorts. So it's really a cornerstone of the lab, the technologies, the tools, the, the reagents. So it's been, you know, for everything from gene expression to microbiome to cancer research, 